Hey, hey, you guys! I hope all of you are doing great, keeping healthy, and welcome back to my PhD life. Thank you so much, you all, who have been sending me wishes and congratulations and a lot of love on finishing my PhD. Yes, I've graduated. And for people who want to know how I stayed on track in my PhD and make sure that I finish in the timelines that I thought of, you can go to the latest video on my channel before this one and get the details. In the previous video on around my second or third tip, I think the third tip, I said that I'll make another video, detailed video on how I kept track of the data that I was generating during my PhD and how I did efficient record keeping which helped me save my life, save me a lot of time and effort through different stages of my PhD, whether it's preparing for group meetings, preparing for meetings with my professor, uh, writing my thesis, writing my publications. And as I promised, here I am with the video where I talk in detail about how I maintained efficient record keeping to make sure that at the end I don't go crazy finding data. Because it's five or four years worth of your work which is going to keep on compiling over time and by the end of the third year you might not remember what you did in first year and why you did it. So it's very very important to keep track of things, name things properly, keep track of folders and all of that I'll show you by going through all the folders that I had prepared, how I had prepared them, how I named my files and all other details. So that's all in store for you today and let's get started. So this is the login page for my office account and uh, this is the OneDrive associate OneDrive account associated with my office account, and the reason I'm showing you uh, this video through my online account rather than the folder on my laptop or on my lab system is because I want to emphasize strongly emphasize on the importance of having online backup for your data. So that worst case, if your laptop crashes, if your lab system crash crashes, there's some unfortunate event because of some unknown devil power which happens with a lot of phd students it is important that you have some online backup which you can access and i prefer to keep it updated all the time so that i don't lose on any data so i have this phd folder on my lab desktop and in my laptop on the hard disk and both of them uh, are being synced continuously so that whatever changes i made in either of the systems uh, they are synced with my online account and whatever data I create there is automatically populated here. So as you'll see, I have a list of folders here uh, in my PhD main PhD folder where I've kept classifications as blog. This is the blog. If, if you've seen the introductory video, I had said that I had thought of writing blogs and I have them on my laptop. So these were all the articles that I had written, but they have never seen light of the day. So it was something titled as a fish might not fly too. I don't know what, I don't remember what the content of this was, but I was talking about molecular diagnostics, choosing your guide, how diagnostics work. Uh, one day all men must die. This is particularly some metaphor that I'm thinking about. Nonetheless, uh, so this is, the way in which I have categorized my main folders and I found it very useful because I kept all the books here, all the conferences I attended, the material that I received from them, the presentations, the posters I made, all of them are in this folder titled conferences and whenever someday I need to review some information or get some material from a conference that I attended, for example, this was a next generation sequencing conference I attended or all the documents that I might need to get the expenses reimbursed, all of them are sort of stored under this folder. So whenever I need, I can just come back and access it. Similarly, I'll go to the reading material and how I categorize them. So you can briefly see how all my folders are kept. All my group meeting presentations are here and they are segregated year wise and then in the year month wise. So this is something I found very, very useful as to whenever I had to go back in time and search for something, this sort of categorization and keeping dates in the file names helped me a lot and helped me save a lot of time and find details quickly and find them. Many a time students just don't keep track of it and then it's impossible to find details and they have to do all the analysis again or make the slides all over again, which I think is not a productive use of your time. Ooh, 
right here you see videos for my YouTube channel. <laughs> uh now i have a separate hard disk for it because there have just been so many videos but yeah that's that's my humble beginning yeah okay coming to the important part the reading material so all the references and whatever i've read i've kept in the folder called reading material and again you'll see multiple subfolders in here as most of you know my work is related to biotechnology and diagnostics so i have talked i have material on antimicrobial resistance, polymerase chain reaction, aptamer, whatever biology books I have, things on the enzyme that I use. CRISPR is another nucleic acid based technique Then whatever material I have on diagnostics. There are some important discussions that you have and you make notes out of those. So those also have kept as a separate record, which I can refer to by writing my thesis or preparing for other exams. See, so similarly, there are almost folders for every different theme. So flow experiments, uh, this was a course that I took of a particular professor, so whatever notes they gave, uh, then whatever software files I have, not the software uh, uh, run files or the setup files, I mean, but the reading material that I read to understand and learn that software. Later on, if there is particular option or feature of the software that you want to use, these reading materials come in very handy. But instead of going to the internet and searching for things all over again, it's better to store them. Uh, all other techniques that I've worked on, as you see, there are so many subclassifications and I've kept material such that, say, whenever I'm writing up something on nucleic acid storage, I can come to this folder and uh, look for all the things that I've read in this. Many people like to name the papers they read uh, by some keywords and then the name of the author and year. That is sort of a standard practice. I like to have important information in the name so that uh, it helps me refer to them easily later on in time, especially when you're writing papers and thesis. So I sort of have this particular way of uh, naming papers that I read so that I can refer to them later. Uh, whatever review papers I have read, I have classified them. Uh, sample preparation papers that I have read. So similarly, there's all subclassification for, and if there is some theory I have read for different principles, and then you see this folder named as too much biology. Uh, initially, when I was an engineer and I didn't understand biology, anything that was too heavy for me, I would put in this folder. So that's again a humble beginning. Uh, similarly, I have subclassifications and all the data, data for the experiments I did stored here. So whatever flow experiments I did are here, whatever lamp experiments I did are here. And then even here I had multiple uh, targets and assays that I did. So wow. I'll go to the most used one, which is this one. And again here I have classifications based on years. So if we go to year 2019, you will see that for each of the months I have separate folders and why this was helpful was because uh, say I did something in January and now I'm in April and I want to look at some experiments that I did early on in the year. I felt that segregating them based on months helped me sort of look at data more easily and also correlate with my group meeting presentations or my meeting presentations with the professor and sort of save me time and keep a better track of my progress also sometimes what happened was say if i open the month of february you see there are so many experiments that i did and each of the experiment folders also i preferred keeping a date but there would be some months i hope april where i have say just four experiments so when i as i talked in my previous video about my monthly or bi-monthly or semester goals right I used to go to these folders and how densely they are populated also sort of gave me an idea of how much experiments I did in that phase. Was I productive or am I becoming slow or am I losing on my grip or my uh, focus on the targets that I had set for myself. So this also sort of helped me keep a tab on that. And I have folders for each of the months and each of those folders further have subfolders with dates. Uh, which helped me track what I did on different times during my experiments. And here you see whatever coursework I took during the different semesters and the professors provided material for those coursework. 
coursework uh, that was stored separately and again it became easy to access them rather than going into my emails and searching for notes and uh, searching for professors emails about different uh, sections that were covered in those subjects so this is how i uh, sort of uh, maintained efficient record keeping and i can't emphasize enough on how much time and effort it has saved me at different points in my phd when i had to write my thesis having my experiments uh, streamlined and categorized under different project heads that i was working on was such a relief then having subheadings was further relieving because i could go back to the point in time that i was looking data for rather than having 50 folders in one a big fold in one main folder and then figuring out which folder is it that i'm looking for i hope these tips help you and motivate you to also pursue a habit of efficient record keeping because this will become really important as years pass by and you keep on collecting mountain of data if there are any questions or any suggestions that others might have regarding how they store and uh, keep a track of their data all of you are welcome to drop your comments in the comment section great so i hope you found all these tips really useful you implement them in your profession if you are not doing a phd or in your phd if you are into a graduate program or planning to get into a graduate program i can't emphasize enough how important this exercise is and how many times you will thank yourself for you know doing things on time writing the right things in the right place so that later over years when you refer to that data you are able to find the details make sense of those details and not sort of spend days on figuring out why you did something in 2017 when you are in 2021 all the best you guys and i hope you find find this helpful take care and i'll see you soon bye